Hello viewers, I am Dr. Venela, a consultant ENT surgeon in Reno Hospitals, Langer House and Banjara Hills. Let's talk about the ear infections. Uh, like uh, we see uh, many people suffering with ear di diseases in, in our day-to-day -day practice. So uh, before going to the uh, causes of the ear infections and treatment of ear infections, let's talk about briefly about the anatomy of the ear. Ear has the external ear, middle ear and inner ear. So external ear is what we see outside and the middle ear is like a match box. It is like a three dimensional box after the external ear and middle ear and after the middle ear, inner ear is situated. So ear is an organ which helps in not only for the hearing, it also helps in balance. So let's talk about the external ear infections. The external ear infections, the common cause we usually see continuous meddling of the ear with earbuds. So uh, we, uh, for the external ear infections, they, they, because of the continuous usage of earbuds, uh, fungal infections, fungal infections are reported in many patients and uh, we, we prescribe antifungal ear drops, we, uh, we prescribe ointments for the external ear and antibiotics. So that it, uh, the external ear infections uh, so are called otitis externa. So this can be treated with uh, medical management. So we, we can use antibiotics, antifungal ear drops and antibacterial ointments. Next coming to the serious infections, like see that is the middle ear infections. So middle ear infections, why the middle ear infections usually occur uh, in, the, in, the, in the adult age group as well as the pediatric age group. So the cause is that because of the anatomy of the middle ear, that it is a, it's like I already mentioned, it's like a three dimensional matchbox. So usually every room requires uh, some ventilation like some window has to be there for the ventilation so what is the structure that helps in the ventilation of the middle ear that is called eustachian tube it is a tube which connects the throat and the ear usually it opens and closes so if if the eustachian tube is not functioning properly so the mid, there will be no ventilation to the middle ear and there will be accumulation of fluid in the middle ear and it causes um, the bacterial infection it can lead to bacterial infection and it can cause middle ear uh, diseases that is called um, acute suppurative otitis media that is acute infection of the middle ear or or chronic suppurative otitis media that is a chronic infection of the middle ear so coming to the pediatric age group so if, if, uh, the pediatric I, I already mentioned because of the eustachian tube dysfunction the middle ear diseases occur so why the but the middle ear infections are frequently reported in the pediatric age group why because there is a difference in the anatomy of eustachian tube in the adult and the child usually in the child it is delicate and it is more horizontal so uh, if, so you see uh, the tonsils adenoids or sinusitis can cause eustachian tube dysfunction in the child if there is a eustachian tube dysfunction there will be accumulation of fluid in the ear and the child suffers with ear pain in, in acute infection of the middle ear the, the child can suffer with fever chills and rigors usually the younger kids they cannot tell they cannot uh, complain uh, to the parents about the ear pain usually the older children can complain so in in those cases usually the younger kids can get high fever chills and uh, severe ear pain uh, so then the child has to be given broad spectrum antibiotics immediately to uh, reduce the extra severity of the infection and uh, another disease reported is called glue ear that is called uh, accumulation of fluid in the middle ear so that can cause uh, deafness that can cause deafness to the child or uh, it can cause uh, bulging of the middle ear or bulging of the tympanic membrane inside so though we treat with antibiotics if it is not improving we have to put a ventilation tube in the middle ear coming to the middle ear infections in adult age group the, the patient can present with a hole in the ear so and and pus in the ear uh, pus in the ear it can be watery discharge or foul smelling uh, ear discharge if there is a foul smelling ear discharge and uh, there are two conditions it is called chronic separative otitis media mucosal disease and chronic separative otitis media squamosal disease so the squamosal squamosal disease is a dangerous it has to be treated only with the surgery Whereas a mucosal disease, it can present with a hole in the ear and, and the reconstruction of the hole of the ear can be done with the surgery called tympanoplasty.
tympanoplasty for the ear surgery we use a instruments microscopic instruments uh, that means a small ear instruments and we do the entire surgery with a sophisticated microscope the high magnified uh, lens will be used to do the ear surgery and uh, there are because uh, then uh, post operatively if, for the mucosal disease if there is a hole uh, in the ear so if, if we are covering the hole by taking the extra skin from the uh, area above the ear that is called temporalis fascia so we cover the hole with that uh, skin and th this can lead to the improvement in the hearing in the post operative period or it, it can uh, prevent the recurrence of the ear infections it can prevent the pus in the middle ear and coming to the pediatric uh, age group, is the surgery required for uh, middle ear infections? So it depends on the type of the middle ear infection. I already told you that mucosal uh, disease is it's a safe disease. It can be treated. Uh, but if there is a hole in the ear, coming to the pediatric age group, we have to wait almost because uh, the, the bone grows uh, till the there is a bone called mastoid bone which is situated behind the ear. It has a it has a eight cells in it. The pneumatization will not be complete if there is a, in the pediatric age group, and we have to wait. But if if still the disease is severe, you can do the surgery. Thank you.